Thank you. Nothing gets the kids' attention like an explosion. And if you walk in the room with uh, goggles on and ear protectors, usually you don't have to quiet the class down. They know that something might be going to happen. So here we've got a series of balloons. If I were going to teach this in my class, I might ask the students, what do you think is in here? And many of them would respond, helium gas, because they're familiar with that from the store. And then I'd remind them, you know, there's another gas that's less dense than air that you may be familiar with. It's in the periodic table. It's the first one. And then you know, some of them figure out, hey, it's hydrogen. And they know that perhaps hydrogen is flammable. So one of these balloons may contain helium, one may contain hydrogen, and also one of these contains hydrogen plus oxygen. In a close to a sto stoichiometric ratio, as best as I could do. And this one, there's a little hint on here. This one contains just oxygen. It's not floating, because oxygen's just about the same density as air, obviously, except the balloon has some mass, so the total density is more than air. So it's just going to lay there. So with this demonstration, exploding balloons, you can do all kinds of things from activation energy, because why isn't the balloon that's got, and I think it's this one, hydrogen and oxygen, or maybe this one, or maybe that one, why isn't it going up now? If you got hydrogen and oxygen, why aren't they exploding? You can bring out the idea of activation energy. You can bring out the idea of kinetics also, because the one with pure hydrogen, as you will see, takes a while to burn because it has to mix with the oxygen so you get a big flame and a boom, while the one that has pure oxygen has a big boom, not much of a flame because it's so fast. And the helium, of course, because it's an inert gas, doesn't burn. I remember in high school, my chemistry teacher said, this is the inert gases. They never react. Then in 1964, when I went off to college, I found out that over the summer, they discovered they actually reacted. It was the first year they had done it. So never say never. Be a little bit of skeptical on that. So we're going to ignite these one at a time and take a look at the different uh, flame fronts that are produced and see if you can figure out what's in what. Obviously, this one's the oxygen. Now, keep in mind, one time of the year to do this is right about May 6th. Something interesting happened on May 6th. That was the day the Hindenburg landed, I think it was in Lakeside, New Jersey, and it had a problem. If it had helium in, life would have been good. The most it would have done is slowly come back down to the Earth. But we were, at the time, the United States was the OPEC of helium, and we wouldn't sell any helium to the Nazis, so they were forced to use hydrogen, which actually has more lifting power, but it does have a slight drawback in that it, it burns. There was also, by the way, in 1919, I believe, there was a dirigible accident right here in Illinois. In, uh, I think something like 10 or 12 people were killed because it had hydrogen in it also. All right, so we're going to do the test now. Um, I'm going to start out maybe with, uh, I don't know, this green one. For some reason, I think this might be the one to start off with. So you may want to cup your ears just in case. If this is the hydrogen and oxygen and you set this off, it could rupture your eardrums in a room this small. So you want to cup them again. Don't put your fingers in them because, again, it could go right through into your brains and knock them right out your nose. Cup your ears like this, and if we could turn the lights down slightly, I'm going to light my torch device here. And we're going to go for the green one, because I think, but I'm not sure, this has got the helium in it. Well, that wasn't that impressive, was it? That was the helium. Now here's the oxygen. So let's try that for a reference. Right here. Not much there. Let's go for the red one. So we're going to light this balloon. All right. You're going to see a big flame front. I got to remember to keep my hand away, otherwise the flame is yellow here. All right, here we go. You ready now? Get the lights down a little bit more, if you can. If you can't, that's fine. Here we go. Oh, 
Oh, a nice yellow flame. Now we've got the last one. This one, make sure you cup your ears. You too, Irene. Sorry, didn't mean to wake you up. All right, on the count of three here, we're gonna light this. This one will be loud. Here we go. It's gonna be a redox reaction, a combination hydrogen plus oxygen to give us water. And check it out, see if it rains in the room after we do this. Okay, now everybody out in the warehouse is now changing their underwear. Oh my God, look at my skull. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh man, oh. I always like to keep an eye out for these demonstrations. Um, so did you see the one? That's because the oxygen and the hydrogen had a mix with this one that went here. This one was almost instantaneously. The reaction rate was a little bit slower here, very, very quick here, so it's much more boom, because the energy was all released all at once.